<coughs> what I just did was put a little thin CA glue on the inside of where I'm going to cut these threads to toughen up the wood a little bit because this is maple. When you're doing the threading with this or any other kind of a mechanism, the harder the wood, the better the threads. Soft woods don't hold them very well. They don't cut very well. Harder woods do much better. The ebony's and the bubinga, the one of them that I passed around. <coughs> the hard ones really do well. They, uh, they, they take the threads, they hold them. But if you use a little bit of CA glue on the softer woods, you can get away with it. What we're doing, we're doing this in two different, you know, top, bottom. Inside threads, outside threads. And this mechanism <clears throat> advances. You can see we are advancing the piece of wood. We're going to advance it into this cutter. And we're going to run as fast as we can. We're going to run at 3,000 RPM. And, but much like a router or whatever else, this that's what you're doing. We're really milling these. But a router runs at 28,000, but the best we can do is 3,000. So, you know... The faster the better when it comes to this sort of an operation. This mechanism is, it's got a click mechanism in the back that you advance on this axis back and forth and that is your depth of cut of your thread. He has uh, devised a, a system where you have five clicks for 16 thread per inch threading. So we're going to start off with the uh, First thing you do is you find it, find your spot where just barely making contact. We're not quite there yet. There I'm there. So I am going to take this out and I am going to pull this back in three clicks, tighten it down, and we're ready to make our first pass. We're as fast as we can go. Everything's locked in. It has to be locked in. If anything moves on you, you're in trouble. One need not get in a big old hurry with this because you're Okay, now that's the first pass. The Simon Hope has a little gizmo on this thing, and I, you can flip it up out of the way and take a look at what you've done. And there's a, it's a nice thing, nice feature with it. <clears throat> the the threads look good, except they're not deep enough, and I didn't, you know, I didn't cut them to be completed. Can you see? Is that is it very visible on the screen? I don't know. There's How many so answers? We're going to drop it down. So the 16 threads is a given by your machine there, right? You can't yes, that's what that. this is. If the, you're the chuck threads, you match them to your chuck. This happened to be an inch and a quarter thread. So we have an inch and a quarter thread uh, chuck. And this is 16 threads. Now, if you want to go to a 12 thread or one of the others, you can buy them, but you change the entire mechanism. What happens if you stop cranking while it's spinning? Doesn't matter. 
you can stop it doesn't matter a bit because you're going this is fixed this is moving yeah, but if you stop that, isn't it just cutting a circle? No, no, it doesn't. So according to formula, two more turns should make this a successful cut. Doesn't matter. Now, from having a little experience with this, I have found that if you, after you cut the threads, rather than backing them out and taking some chips off and tips off, loosen it up, move it forward so that you're not in contact anymore, and then flip it out, and you end up with a better thread. Now I can back it out. So we've completed this. Or you just kind of clear the threads. You, uh, when you put the lathe in reverse, you crank it out. Um, I mean, they, they don't have to. Back, back cutting like a router? It'd be a back cutting like a router. I haven't tried that one yet, but that's one we might want to, just for the heck of it. But anyway, this one is completed. So I'll flip this one around to you. Now, normally, we'll we did this a little different way than I normally do. Um, this I would cut any size I wanted, just cut it into the for the inside threads, and then mic it with calipers. And there's a formula for it of 1.20 millimeters added to it is what you do for the outside thread. Nope. But you can see that these threads don't want to They're pretty darn good in a piece of hard maple. Now, this, what's wrong with this whole system is now that we've done that, we got to move all the stuff out and put the chuck on the other end to do this. If, if you didn't already have a cut. So we're going to try and do this. Normally, you would have this in the headstock with the chuck and we would uh, do that piece and then complete it put this and this would be in the headstock you would complete it and then go on with it but we have already cut this so we're going to try and put this in the chuck and see how this works out if you did have to take it out of a chuck it would be good it would be advantageous if you mark where it was in that chuck, which jaw is where on the piece of wood. Probably right. And mm -hmm. usually which you can did. replicate it fairly close. If this, um, we're trying something a little different. We've got another piece to yeah. do the other way. If this doesn't work. Notice that voice of confidence. I've never tried it this way, so we're trying something different. And why is everybody sitting back so far? They're smart. <laughs> you can do this to one side or the other, it doesn't matter. If it's inside or outside, I'll do it on the outside. Now again...
I'm eyeballing it, but on the outside, you can get away with that because I can advance this and see how far the cutter is away from the... Yes, or else... Take, well, you know what, when you're doing the outside, I can advance this and tell if I'm pretty square or not. Uh, but the only thing, there seems to be a little bit of wobble in this for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I think you're right. The piece in the chuck is not just squared up as well as one would like. But we're going to cut it. And I think it's going to be a little bit wobbly, but we're going to do it anyway. It should cut it, it's just going to not line up on the outside edges. That's right. But it will cut it. No question about that. Just screw it on and screw up the whole box. I'm going to give us a little better shot at it by hitting it again with a little CA glue. Will stiffen it. We do have threads. Devil's gonna be awful short. <laughs> it does work. That works just fine. We'll do it. Um, we'll do it. We'll do it the old way, the hard way. 
Why doesn't Joe do it the new way? Then we can put the two together. Come on, Joe. Let's do it one at a time, though. Do it full right. complete um, yeah, so that we point. don't have... We don't Inside caliper, the vernier, and you, at zero, after you find the inside uh, dimension, you zero it and add 1.20 with my calipers. These are cheap Wixies. And uh, he states in his literature that 1.1 0.10 is the number. 1.10 doesn't work with my calipers. 1.20 does. So uh, you know what? You find whatever works for you. But these are cheap calipers and uh, he's probably using stairs. Mine, mine are gimmies. <laughs> so, but 1.20 added to it for the outside dimension. Threads go all the way to the bottom every time, and you don't have any hang ups or whatever else. Uh, it works. Uh, the, machine, the system works. But you do have to measure carefully. And if you don't have that gizmo, you can do it just as well this way as long as you're careful with your measurement. Because when you're putting threads in, uh, too big, they don't, they don't work, and too small, they just fall in. So you got to measure it correctly. Ready? Yeah. You want to explain this? Uh, what I did is it came up with a little fly cutter, which allows us to cut both the male and the female, and then the space that's in between that that uh, 1.2 millimeters. There's a little spacer in between, and so what we do is we just uh, switch that spacer. And since we don't have a center point for the drill to ride on, we're riding it on the tool rod. How deep do you want it, Ray? Oh, it's best to leave the center solid. Yeah, because then the, the drill point will ride in the center and support it. Yeah, I just wasn't thinking about that at all. All right. That's Ready all it takes. Push the thread all right. Now we're gonna we're gonna finish this one up before we do that. Explain what you're doing. All right, I'm going to take the extra wood out so that we have the inside out, and we can put the thread in. And we need to get this cleaned up. How cool is that? This happens to be a Hunter Osprey with a six millimeter cup. Carbide. Are any good? They great. They work. And a tad high. Because it's a, uh, you notice I'm laying it over, and you're shear cutting with it. I notice you have a tilt of it. Ten thirty there. Yep. About ten thirty. But you can see it removes plenty of material, and that inside is nice and smooth. Is it a smoother cut, better cut than the filter? And what? Yeah, because uh, in that method, this this mode, when it's that way, you're shear cutting right off its bottom edge. See what it does. 
Now I'm going to cut a relief at inside for the cutter when the milk cutter is going in so it doesn't bind up. So I'm going to cut a relief so that the threads have some place to end. I didn't clean up the bottom too much, but we've got a relief. But it's a piece of cracked maple to start with, so we're not going to mess with it too much. But we are ready. The next thing we're going to do is pull this. Put the hope. In place. Okay, in doing that, we've left, we haven't taken this out of the chuck, so we've kept everything in alignment. Cutter back in the headstock. Did that collet chuck come with it? No. This is a be all collet uh, thing. You could <laughs> use a Jacobs? It's, it's uh, yeah, you can use it. Actually, before I had this, I just took my uh, regular chuck and took the, the jaws out of it and uh, ran on the what are these? The little jaws. The little jaws inside. So, uh, but this runs truer and better. This is a better way to go. But these are 150 bucks or something like that. But it's uh, nice to have cheap. deep pocket Dave Skaggs helping you. And they got to have all the other colors. Deep pocket Dave buying all this stuff. <laughs> and I'm just using it. <laughs> Up to what? It's up to 470 now. Oh, God. I, I'm just so glad that he's got all this money. <laughs> Smell that hole. I don't want this to get away. If you use a Jacob's chuck, you're supposed to put a drop on it. <laughs> Makes sense. You use a Jacobs truck, you're supposed to put a drawbar on it. Yeah, you're supposed to put a, yeah, going through the headstock and uh, pull it up. This sure does work though. You don't want it coming loose when you're trying to do it. Alright, and then we're going to bring this up. Eyeball says I'm not bad. How do you know that the cutter is running parallel to the waves? Or the banjo can move anywhere. Yes, it can. It's just you're doing it by eye and threading in and out. I'm doing it by eye. I look down this. Looks pretty darn good. 
kind of ways. Smidgen off. Joe just put that board in there to give him a longer edge to look at to line it up with the waves, which is probably a good idea. I am pretty close. I found with uh, using the half inch threaded tails that goes in my live center to put a chuck on, they really aren't that precision. They don't line up as well as you would like them to. Now the one thing I didn't do, and I think I ought to do it, yep. CA glue for this softer wood. If you don't want the wood stained, spray it with lacquer before you do that. I'm going to seal the wood and then you can keep the uh, penetration. The uh, super glue won't penetrate the wood so much. Okay. All right, we're good to go. And when you, you know, cut a little bit of the threads, put the super glue back in the threads, and everything else will be sealed. My eyeball tells me that's good in one pass. Riker. <laughs> and again, if I can do this without backing it off running, I prefer to because it, um, my experience is that you get a better cut this way. Those are good threads. We just have to switch it in for in. So we've got the cutter. This is the bad part. If you do it the right, the way it's prescribed, you have to take it apart and reverse everything. So now all we do is put them in in the other order. A little spacer in between. Two spacers are basically just you need the measured with a caliper to give you the two ohms. Yep, you have the two quarter inch ones because you need to be able to swap them a full quarter inch, and then the middle one gives you that extra space that you need for cutting threads. If you take out the middle spacer and use it on one side and then the other, it would just make a tight fitting box lid. Now 
we trained the monkey to do all this extra. Mm -hmm. Make a uh, stick. Check them more damn better than my. Robo Hippie says the two best tools a turner can have is a shovel and one of those pick up sticks. Yep. That's good. Oh, this is going to be too small. We don't have enough. Oh, wait, wait a minute. This is for the. This is for the uh, mail. Yeah, mail. So yeah we brought it away. Dan in there. I just thinner the party coolant. That would just make it a little bigger. What I didn't do last time, which I normally do, is put a little relief on the back of this so that the milling cutter, when it goes in, has a place to rest. Again, I you know I undercut in the inside, and this this one I would do the same thing. Okay, now the cutter has a place just to end. Could have done that a little faster, couldn't I? Good enough, though. Now, I would normally hollow out the inside or whatever. We really don't care very much because we're not going to save this. What I will do is put a little bit of a camper on that edge. That's it. Right. Let's put a little chamfer on uh, that edge. You notice that little fuzz like fluff that comes off? These things do quite well if you hold them the right way. See the look on his face? What's that look on his face? Anytime he sees carbide, eh, stuck in the dark ages. <laughs> he makes a tool do better than probably more than anybody I've ever known, but he's the one of the few. <laughs> All right, we got to get this off.
That's pretty good. It's too good. And then lock it down. CA glue. We are a tad light. We're going to make one more click. The cutter is rotating down onto the wood rather than up into the wood. Now we're a little bit, we're, a little, we're tight for some reason on this one. But, we don't have... Pass on it. Huh? Put another pass to it? We got the right hand? Yeah, well, you know, I don't think so. I think we're going to have to sand it off a little bit and then recut re it, but we can do that. Not a problem. Let's try another another crank crank but if you just if you just keep cutting it it wouldn't reduce the diameter yeah it, it does sure it does yeah. it does reduce the diameter so what um, he prescribes that you take a little bit of sandpaper knock the points off and then do it because the points break off otherwise yeah the point <laughs> oh Ouch. You erased that part, right? I didn't do that on purpose. So. We are going to get that. Needs wax, but other than that.